Hey guys, it's Ben with Myers Woodshop, and today is one of my favorite days in the shop. It's new printer day, and this is a 3D printer. It's from Nova 3D. It's the resin printer, and I think they sent over some resin. So let's open this up and check out what this printer looks like, see if it's any good. Let's first check out the little box. I think they sent over some sample resin, so we can give that a try. Inside this box is some Nova 3D resin. Let's check out what color we got. So we got gray, 500 grams. That's like the half bottles of resin. So it's their Nova 3D resin in gray. So we'll uh, check that out. It's washable resin. I don't know if this is safer than the other resin I usually use, but uh, we'll look into that. Now let's open the big printer. So we're gonna move that resin back behind me. Let's go ahead and open this. All right, just opening it up, you can see packaging. We have the instructions. It's like just a one sheet. This is the Bene 4 Mono printer. Oh, looks like right on top, it includes some resin. Uh, another thing of gray, 250 grams. So we have a bunch of gray to try out. I don't know why they sent the same color of whatever was included, but we have a bunch of gray. We'll print something in gray for sure. Taking this off, looks like everything comes out in one shot. So I'm going to do it upside down, which may be the wrong way. Okay, looks like we're okay doing it upside down. So we did have uh, some FEP film that was included inside, which is good because that's a consumable part. I'm gonna flip it back over. And now we can take off the protective foam. So we have that foam and it looks like that is our lid. And we have some foam inside and something inside here take out inside that foam. I think that's everything. We'll open that later. Have this protective foam and nothing inside that. And then we have this protective bag and I don't think anything's in that bag. So here is the machine. This is a really solid construction. I am very impressed. It looks really, really well built. Uh, it feels really well built. I have a Prusa, if you see my other videos where I unbox the Prusa SL1 Live, and this feels and looks every bit as well made as the Prusa. That's not to say it's gonna work the same, but it feels and looks the same quality, which kind of makes me bum because I spent 12 grand on that and this is significantly less. <laughs> so that is the machine itself. It does have the, the Z axis all the way down. I can see a piece of foam inside protecting the glass from this. So we'll get to that in a minute. Let me take off this protective film from the lid. What's nice about this, as opposed to my Prusa, is this comes all together assembled, basically. We have to assemble the lid on and I paid uh, for the kit for the Prusa and it was $1,200. And I had to assemble every bit, which kind of sucks. So this looks like we have a hinge back here to hold this on. And we probably just have two simple bolts to hold that on where it'll go on like that. I'm thinking the bolts are probably in that pack, but we can get a quick look at what it looks like. There's our resin printer, and it looks legit. Really impressed. So let's set this aside and check out this little package. See what we have in here. So inside, it looks like we have the power cord. We have the power brick. We have something in here. Here. These are the snippers, I think. Yep. We have a set of snippers, 
which every 3D printer should come with. Uh, we have a plastic bag with a USB stick. It says Nova 3D and it is four gigabytes, which is good, perfect. We need four gigs of storage. So there's that. We have a plastic spatula to scrape off all the resin and put it back into the resin bag, so that's perfect. We have an empty spray bottle. I don't know what that's for. We have some blue gloves, because anytime you're working with resin, you always want to wear gloves because it's highly toxic when it's not cured. Um, we have a, looks like some paper strainers because you always want to strain when you pour the resin back in, you always want to strain it back. So here's a strainer. And then the last thing in the box is some Allen keys and some bolts. There's a whole lot more bolts in here than just the two to attach the lid. So we'll have to check out the instructions and see what those go to. So that is the kit so far. I'm really impressed at this point. Everything I need is in here, including the sample resin that it comes with, which is 250 grams of gray. And then I have 500 more grams to print a bunch of things on here. So let's get to attaching everything that needs a bolt. All right, the first thing we need to do is open this bag and get out the screws to attach the screen. So we're going to get the really big ones. There's three really big ones. I'm assuming those are it because they seem to fit perfectly in this cutout for them. So that is our hinged area. It looks like it only goes back that far, which will reveal this much of the machine, which is perfect amount. Got some fuzz in here and we'll take out. So now it says to plug it in and connect to, connect to the power to move the Z up. All right, we're zoomed in. I'm going to take the sticker off of the front and we'll turn it on for the first time and see what it looks like. So we've got Nova 3D. And it's booting. We're selecting our language. Select English. Confirm. So we have task, file, control, and settings. Let's go into settings. It will do an LED uh, startup check. We can do language. Tells us the version we have. We have 5.0.1. 2.2.3, 3.09-D, I don't know what any of that means. I'm going to select English on that the language. We can connect to our Wi-Fi from here. And right now we're going to control and it says to make the Z go up. So we're going to do a platform lift and we're going to go up 10. We'll keep going up. I'll probably hit 50 and make it go up. You can see that my my lead screw is actually straight as compared to my um, what was the other one? A net it was completely bent. So this one's going up. So this other bag of screws I have. From what I can tell, these are all extra, which is a tremendous amount of extra screws. So for some reason you need other screws, you'll be set with the amount they provide in this bag. Just putting them all in the bag so I don't lose them. All right, it says, go ahead and lift it up 50. And then when we're done with that, we're going to Take this little piece of foam out and there's a protective film inside here that we're going to take off of the uh, tray that holds the resin in. I'm just going to loosen these up, 
take the tray off and let you see inside. You can see here's the tray. It does have a protective film in here. If I can get this little pull tab in my hand. It's near impossible. And I'll take that and remove it. That's a protective film. And then there's another one over the LCD screen. And I'll remove that. And I'll put this tray back in. Does, what is nice, it does say max amount of film uh, that you would put in here. But it doesn't give you a percent like it does in the Prusa where it's 10, uh, 20, 30, 40, you know, how much is left. So that's kind of a bummer. All right, once we do that, we'll keep this off. I don't know why I took it all the way off. We're gonna go into here and we're going to go to back. We're gonna to go to settings and we'll do a click start to light up the LCD screen. So I'm gonna click start on that. It's doing a system check. And I hit confirm. We can see it says screen test 10 seconds. It's lit up purple again. Uh, once it's lit up, cracks is not lit up, contact customer service. So that's the end of that. Now we're going to install the build plate back in the printer. Screw it down. And we'll do a calibration. And we're going to go into... I'm going to go into the settings, Oop. control, we'll do calibration. We're going to put a piece of paper in here. And then we're going to hit platform lift. We're going to go down. Fifty. Then we're going to go back to control and click on reset. So I'm clicking reset on the control and it's going to do some homing. And it'll move down to stillness. We'll observe the gap between the platform and the screen and we'll drag the A4 paper, which we have, to feel a friction on four different, um, to check whether the force is the same. If they're not equal, please calibrate the build plate according to Elfin 2 calibration tutorial video on the website. So that seems incredibly equal and calibrated pretty well. Uh, yeah. So this is a little bit different calibration than my Prusa. My Prusa can tilt and calibrate itself and then you tighten it. This one, you have these four bolts. Now I'm starting to understand. I haven't watched the video, but I'm starting to understand because it feels like the back left is a little bit closer or a little bit farther away than the other points. So I should be able to just tighten this one up and that would push this back corner down as opposed to the other corners. And then I'm going to go do the other corners because this feels a little looser on this side than it does on that side. So I'll do this one a little bit, this one a little bit. And I'll make sure that this is all the way back. And that feels close to tight. I'm going to tighten up these sides maybe a half a turn. Maybe that was a little too much because now the right side feels a little bit more than the left. And 
I'm going to do the right side just a smidge. And that feels even to me. So we're finished. So for now, this is our first time use. We're going to hit the print control on the main menu and then go up 50. We're going to install the tray. We're going to go up 50 again. So we got to pour resin into this tray. So we'll install that just like that. And we're going to pour resin until it reaches the max which is the line in the back, back there. So we're gonna use the test resin that they have. Always make sure to shake it up really, really well before you use any. It's funny, in the example, they show a green print thing. And for us, we're gonna be using this gray. That seems pretty good. I don't have gloves on for this point, but this isn't the messy part. I'm just gonna fill this up, and the max is this whole sample bottle of 250 grams. So that's everything. We're going to hang on to the bottle because we may, we'll refill it. Oh, it's stinky. So that's our max. At that point, we're just going to close the lid. Just like so. We're going to take the USB stick and we're going to plug it in to the back USB port. It's got an ethernet a power and a USB port on the back. And we're going to go back, let's see, we'll come down here and we'll go back and we'll go to file and we can see we have Nova test mono and the octopus and we can choose either one. I'm going to go octopus on this one and we have a play and a trash. We also have a local file and USB file. This is the USB file. Looks like nothing is on our USB, so it does have onboard memory and it has these two files, which is exactly like my Prusa. We'll click on Octopus and we'll hit play. Please check if the LCD screen and resin tank are clean. We know they are because we haven't used them yet. We'll hit confirm. Nothing is happening. This is 5.16 megabytes. The mono print is 8.14. So I'm going to hit play again and hit confirm. And we have nothing happening. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on. Maybe we need to select the mono. Confirm. Nova screen test is going on right now? Do you want to cancel the printing? Oh, we ran that screen test and I think that that uh, is what it was doing. Although even when I hit cancel, it was 22 seconds and it says 100% done. It isn't stopping. So I decided to check out the firmware and see if there was anything updated. There was. So I went to their website, installed a firmware update for this. 
power button is weird. I'm not sure if I actually push it in. There's no like clickable feeling of it turning on. Um, I pushed it in twice now and it's not lighting up. Maybe I need to hold it. Holding it. There we go. So this is what it'll look like when you update the firmware. This 3.5 is the newest one. I just put it in. Hit settings, network settings, and who? Is it control? Oh, it was in settings. Language 3.0.9. And it's supposed to when you plug in the USB stick. Ask for an update. But I got no update. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to settings and we're gonna connect this to my Wi-Fi. So we're gonna click on this button. You can see Wayland Shop minus 64. The lower the number, the higher uh, the reception is. So we're gonna choose that one and confirm. And then I'm gonna put in my code. So don't look at this part. Okay, so I am connected. I put in my, I chose my Wi-Fi. I put in my password, which doesn't show up now and it'll bring you an IP address down below. At this point, if there was a firmware upgrade, it would do that automatically. So we're good in this setting. If we go to language, um, we're gonna set this to English. So there's our English, and then we're gonna go back here. So now we'll go to control. I'm sorry, we'll go to task. Nope, where are we going? We're going to file and we're gonna do the octopus test, and we'll hit play. Check if there, check the LCD and resin. We have resin in there, we put some in there, we'll hit confirm, and it changed here. We're going to parsing file, and it's now printing. So it's lowering into the vat, and we'll take a look at what it does once it gets in there. So that Z is a little slow. I wish it went a little faster and knew how far down it could go, but we're now going into the vat. Nice thing about this build plate is it's angled so the resin won't sit on top, it'll actually drip out. See, we got bubbles. And it says now the parsing, parsing was a success. I don't really know what that means, but we are printing and it just changed into the octopus. So we'll take a look. Take a look at the screen. Now it says the octopus mono. That's a picture of what it's gonna print. Um, I don't know what this one means, 120, I'm not sure. This is zero of 40, 455 layers. We're pointing at 0 .050 zero millimeter layer height. And we got a pause play uh, pause and stop down below. We're at 0% of the time. So I'm assuming it's going because the pause should be a play if it wasn't ready, although the time hasn't started and I'm not seeing it move up top. So I have to wait. We'll have to wait on that. See if this changes. Okay, we got time now. There we go. We're two minutes and three seconds in out of a six hour and 56 minute and 38 second print. So from what I can tell from resin printers I've used in the past, these are pretty dead on. So we'll just wait and watch and see what comes out. All right, so I'm maybe like uh, 27 minutes in. It has now changed itself to one hour, 19 minutes and 36 seconds. So it dropped five hours. Uh, in speed, so I'm not sure why, but that's a welcome thing. <laughs> it's much faster. So just a heads up in the middle of the print. I, I do hear it go up and down. You can kind of see between each layer. So 
see it just move up and down. It's super silent. You wouldn't hear this in an office if you were the only person in it. So, uh, and I honestly haven't smelled any resin fumes as you usually do from this style printer, but we'll be back in an hour and 19 minutes. All right, so we finished our print and we're gonna open this up. We're gonna get the little plastic spatula and we're just gonna scrape off the resin that we didn't use off the top. And the back side. Have a paper towel here. So I'm gonna loosen this up. Kind of turn it on its side and let the resin come off into the vat. So we don't want to get any of this resin on the machine itself. And now we have the octopus right here. You can see So we're just going to take that off. Just kind of scraping them a little bit. These stuck pretty good. Carefully you got to scrape them because We don't want to break any of his legs. My Prusa came with a metal scraper. And this one didn't. He's a lot harder to get off. If I can grab him by the head and pull him. No. I feel like I might break him off and get the metal scraper and scrape him. If you can get a metal scraper, this is a lot easier. He is stuck. There we go. Popped him off. I don't think I broke any of the legs. So that's really good. So we're going to go wash him off. I'm going to cure him in my Prusa Cure. It's one bad thing is we don't have a curing machine uh, for this Nova. You have to provide your own way to cure things. But let's cure him off and take a look. While he's curing, I'm going to go ahead and take the spatula. Kind of a... Uh, Mix up the resin again. And anytime you let the resin sit for a little while, you want to mix it up. Be careful that you don't spill it out. Because I am going to start uh, the other sample print so we can take a look at what's on there. All right, so that's good. Go ahead and lock that down. Close this lid. Now we're going to go to file, we're going to print the Nova test and hit play. And we'll start printing the Nova. All right, our second print is finished. 
So open it up, we can see we have their test print. I do have a little bit of separation from the bed here. So that is kind of a bummer. I'll take this build plate off. You can see how it's separate. It's actually a separated layer. So the layer didn't uh, form on this side. Let me scrape off all of the resin. That's excess. You can see it's Nova 3D. It's a nice model. And these are uh, all formed correctly. I think we might have lost something here. I'm not sure if there should have been another one, but it probably didn't work because it's separated over here. So we're just gonna take this off And it's extremely hard with this plastic spatula. Yeah, I recommend if you buy one of these, get a metal spatula to get it off because I am not able to get it off with this plastic spatula. You'll see with the metal spatula, it's a little easier, but still quite hard to get off a print. It really sticks to that bottom layer. So here's our print. You can see now the layer did not uh, attach. So that kind of screwed everything up. Although I'm really impressed it's still printed with it uh, split. So I'm gonna cure this and then we'll take a look a little closer. So I just loaded a file off of a USB stick. This is my own personal file. It's the first one I'm gonna try that I sliced myself. So we'll see how well it does. It's called Meeples. It should be about an hour I think is what the slicer said. It's now lowering down into the tank. So we'll check out a non-sample file and that'll be the real test for this machine. All right, these guys finished. So I can take them off. They look proper, uh, although their heads do look a little longer, but that may be because um, all the resin is dripping down. So I'm gonna take them off. I'm gonna bring it down here. I'm gonna scrape these guys off. Hope I don't break them in the process. Just like that. They didn't break them. So that's good. And I'm gonna go wash these and we'll take a closer look. All right, when you're finished with the resin, we're gonna put our strainer here. Just gonna take off this top. And then we're just gonna pour the resin into the strainer. Do it back here so if I screw up, it'll go. Just like that. You wanna make sure you get all of the resin. There's lots of resin still in here. That's pretty much how you wanna get it. Once you've done that, I'm sure you always have a bunch of paper towels on hand. Which you'll be using a lot. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna go wash it out in the sink. I'm just gonna wipe it off for now. Get what resin I can out with a paper towel. No matter what you do, it's imperative you don't get resin on that LCD screen that this sits on top of. Anything that I used resin with, anything that resin may have gotten on, I wipe down with a paper towel and then we'll clean it with some Dawn dish soap and a little bit of a uh, alcohol and then we can let it sit out in the sun it'll cure and you'll be able to just peel it right off all right that pretty much got everything we need so now we'll just go wash it off in the sink all right you can see the quality i left the some supports on here i haven't taken it off the quality is ridiculously good for um what we got here. And you can see on the guy on the right, if I can zoom in even closer, you can even see there's a dragon on his shield. That's how very good the quality is. I am super impressed. It is as good as my Prusa in quality of print. And that machine was $1,200. And this one's less than four. 
So you're getting the quality absolutely for sure. It's here. I don't really know. Well, I did kind of squish these circles. So don't count that, but the quality is there. I don't, I'm not sure what's up with that separated piece there, but the quality is really good on the octopus as well. Uh, everything articulates as it should, so really nice. So that's a look at the Nova 3D Bene 4 Mono. It's a really, really good machine that is worth the price. It rivals the quality of my Prusa at five times the price. So uh, if you're looking at a resin printer, this is a good one to start out with at least. It actually has just a hair, maybe a quarter inch uh, to a half inch bigger build plate than my Prusa as well. So everything is comparing to my Prusa really, because that's the standard of which everything should get compared. It's such a good machine. And this one stands very close to that machine. Now you will see that I did an A-net video for their uh, resin printer and it was absolute trash and don't waste your money on that and that one's about 250 dollars and this one's i think 399 so for the extra money buy this machine and you'll be super happy with it you usually get what you pay for um, but this one has worked really well the slicer worked really well i'm liking the slicer it's not chidu box but there is a plug-in for that so you can use that that's the one that most people use but their Nova Slicer has been really good. I didn't see anything lacking in that slicer that I needed. And I did slice these little figures of myself and my friends in that, and they came out perfect, absolutely perfect. So um, the gray that they include is a really nice quality gray. Again, the build quality is exceptional. You pull it out of the box, and I was just amazed at how high quality this felt out of the box. I love that it hinges backwards and it's not something you just take off. Um, and the parts inside the screen are all very high quality. So I do recommend this machine. What I've used so far, I've seen the quality to be exceptional for the price, especially when I compare it to my more expensive resin printer from the Prusa. So if you're looking at a resin printer, take a look at this Nova 3D Bene 4 Mono. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised with how well this comes out and how well it works and the quality of your prints. Do remember that resin printing is a lot more toxic, a lot more work, there's a lot more cleanup. So you are, if you're coming to a resin printing, never doing it before, there's gonna be a lot of differences in that where you have to do a lot more cleanup. It's not as uh, straightforward as FDM printing. So make sure to uh, look up all the safety regulations for resin printing because that stuff is pretty toxic. That's why they include gloves and you always want to wear gloves when handling anything that the resin touches. So if you're interested in this machine and anything else, I'll put links down in the description below. As always, happy printing.